no like tonight it doesn't matter you know how to ride the train so you're gonna go out your hobby is dancing let's go find a place where you can go dance and oh this is where the fun starts Hey everyone, welcome back to part two, another episode of how we learn, why we learn Japanese. I just mm. gave the title away. Hey, who cares? <laughs> We're the hosts. My name's MJ. My name is Adam. And just as you heard me, uh, this is part two of the episode where previously I talked about why and how I learned Japanese. Now we're mm. going to go over, turn the tables and learn from Adam why and how he studied and learned Japanese. Hopefully this is some information that can help you. Maybe you can use some of these these things that we're doing in your own studies. Yeah. Or, or maybe it'll just help you kind of understand more of where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. But if you enjoy the last one, you're going to enjoy this one. So you can just take the time right now to hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to listen to more native English conversation to help your English ears grow and get better and better and better. Because yes. that's all we want you to do. Get better. Um, that's it. So let's jump right into it because the last right. episode was so long. <laughs> let's hear right away from Adam. All right. His story. Let's take it back mm. and learn why Adam decided to study Japanese. All right. So uh, like MJ in our last episode said he started with anime. And I think that's where a lot of learners of Japanese start with anime as that gateway, the window to Japan. And for me too, it was, it was anime as well. Sailor Moon was one of them. I think going way back, my fondest memories of like Karopian friends and like uh, Hello Kitty as like a three-year-old I was watching those shows, but Whoa. I didn't know they were Japanese. I just saw them on TV and I would watch them all the time. Yeah. Um, and then going forward, it was... Sailor Moon, and then going forward, it was Dragon Ball, and then going forward, it was Pokemon, and then take me years into the future, and I'm in university, and we're able to take elective courses, which means we don't have to focus on just what we're studying. We can have like some options. So mm -hmm. I think the first year of university, I thought about taking Japanese, but I was so nervous and so mm -hmm. scared about just like, you know, going back to our, our episode, first episode this week, I was like an introvert, but um, I was interested in Japanese. So it took me until the second year of university to actually start the Japanese course, the beginner Japanese course. Uh, in that course, we did a lot of different activities. Um, different from MJ, I was able to speak more and more with the other students, and we were required to do like skits every i don't know three months we had to put a, together all the the stuff we learned and make a skit which is a presentation like a role play with our group so those were very fun because you see all the ideas from the different students and we got very creative with our ideas using uh very beginner japanese and then moving forward again going into my graduation year i'm trying to figure out what i want to do after graduation, and I learned that I can go work in Japan. So I was like, hey, I studied Japanese for a year. It would be awesome. And I had already gone for a month to Japan for just like a holiday. Um, I made a couple friends there, and I wanted to reunite with them when I would graduate and then go work in Japan. But after graduation, I moved to Japan and started working. And Apparently, everyone was working at the time, so we, none of us got to hang out. So I was kind of left alone to just figure it out. And my Japanese was okay. Not that great, though, because I just learned beginner Japanese. I could say more than sumimasen and uh, what's the other words? Uh, onigiri. Onigiri, <laughs> yes. Hanabi. I could introduce myself and I could say onigiri, hanabi, sumimasen. And that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so and because of that you know <laughs> i was all alone which is one thing in a completely new country far away from home starting work living by myself like all of these new things were happening all at once and there was like a week where i started feeling homesick and i wasn't living in osaka as well and like it's it's for me it's it's bizarre because 
I didn't want to have that feeling anymore. I didn't want to just stay by myself. And I was thinking to myself, no, like tonight, it doesn't matter. You know how to ride the train. So you're going to go out. Your hobby is dancing. Let's go find a place where you can go dance. And oh. this is where the fun starts because, and this is also how I think it snowballed into me improving my Japanese like really, really quickly. Um, because I went out that one Friday night and I ended up in this club, you know, dance club. But the place where I went, it was more like a small community of people. There were DJs and dancers, like, you know, dance instructors and the bartending staff. Everybody enjoys not just having a good time, but also music. So there was like instruments where you can play along with the music that was playing, lounge chairs where you can just enjoy and relax uh, and, you know, absorb the music. You weren't like forced to drink if you didn't want to drink. The dance room had like a great sound system so the dancers could all go and dance. And when I went there, not knowing anybody, I just started dancing by myself, introvert. And, you know, as the night progresses, people are starting having a good time. You see the dancers kind of battling each other and stuff. And there was this other dancer and myself, and we would kind of go back and forth like battling. And at the end, he talked to me, he spoke to me. Um, and he spoke in English. So that's a good thing because, you know, the communication is possible. And I couldn't speak that well Japanese. But he says, oh, you dance really good. Like, let me introduce you to my friends who are also dancers. Uh, I'm a university student and I study at this school that's like international. Um, so let's be friends. Hey, first friend <laughs> or second friend. Yeah, hey. And his friends who are all dancers, they not all of them could speak English. Not all of them were in an international school. There were a few who were, but most of them weren't. And they didn't speak that well English. They were interested in it. The music they liked was all like soul, jazz and stuff like that. And house yeah. music, which is all in English. So I think that was a great bubble for me to be in. Because after that night, we all went to go eat breakfast at Osho. <laughs> eat gyoza for breakfast but everyone's speaking in japanese and i'm just like enjoying the moment meeting all these new people uh one of the guys had the same birthday as me and we were like all happy and excited about that and then turns out one of the people who was going to the same school as the friend that i just made lived in the same city as me and her mother ran a pub a small izakaya and she said, oh, come to my mother's pub. So I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. And I think that's part two of how my Japanese got better because I was, again, in an environment. I would go to this pub on Friday. Her mother's very nice. She was like my mother. She said, call me mama. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I would go there and nobody spoke English. And I think that environment boosted my Japanese as well. And one thing I didn't do, which is good for anybody learning, is I never said I didn't understand. And I'm going to tell you why this is good. Because when you tell someone you didn't understand or you don't understand while they're speaking, sometimes it feels like you're not interested in the conversation or, you know, they can't talk to you anymore because you don't understand. What I did do instead was just listen. Listen and look around and be observant. And if I could speak and answer the question, I answered to the best of my ability. Um, but when I couldn't understand, I just kept on listening and I kept on paying attention to what was happening in the whole atmosphere. People are, you know, talking, they're playing a, a game, they're playing cards, they're playing uh, mahjong, they're drinking, they're eating, they're all talking to each other. It's a small place, so you can hear every single conversation. And with that, I started doing like what MJ was doing, picking up different words that I don't understand, throwing those to the, the back and picking up the words that I could understand and putting them together like a puzzle in my brain and trying to understand the whole conversation. And I think that's how my ability to understand different vocabularies 
started growing because I was in these conversations, not just at the pub, but at the club, you know, when I'm dancing with my friends, they're talking about music and stuff like that. And then at the pub, you know, they're talking about their work, they're talking about whatever events are happening, sometimes politics, sometimes TV programs, um, sometimes celebrity talk, you know, sometimes gossip. Um, and I'm just absorbing all of this information. And I think little by little, after absorbing the information, suddenly these words that I never knew I learned, just like MJ, were coming out of my mouth. Little by little, I think my language ability got better, not by reading books, but just by being in an environment, right? We always talk yeah. about making that environment where you can learn. And it doesn't have to be in a country. I mean, if it is, make the best of it, no matter how long the time you have in that country is. Um, and just try and absorb as much as you can. Um, I made a lot of mistakes at first, but little by little, you know, start putting words together, letting them come out of my mouth and see how the person receives them. And a lot of the times they might say, oh, I don't really understand what you're saying, but I kind of understand what you're saying. And it's just a confidence yeah. boost, you know? So that is how I learned and I'm still learning Japanese by still observing and building on conversations and listening to the words that I don't understand and trying to see if they pop up in other places so I know that I should know these words or not, you know? And when I don't understand a word... Whoa. Now we have, I have a smartphone. MJ doesn't have a smartphone, but I think that's a good oh, thing yeah. to have because sometimes when a conversation is happening and I'm just listening to it and I hear these words ha uh, being spoken about, I can just quickly search the word that I'm not too sure about that's being mainly used in this conversation. And then, oh, okay, this is what that means. That's what they're talking about. Oh, I understand now. I understand everything. I feel so like achieved at this moment because that one little puzzle piece in this whole conversation yeah. was something that I didn't understand. And now I understand it. And now I understand what, exactly what they're talking about. Would you, would you do that in the conversation during the conversation? I wouldn't do after? it during the conversation. During the conversation, I might just ask like, Oh, what does this word mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they'll tell me and then it's fine. Like I understand again. Uh, if I'm not in the conversation directly, if I'm just listening to a conversation like between coworkers or, you know, somebody is talking about this thing and I'm kind of eavesdropping <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're very heated and I want to know, like, what is he talking about? Uh, then I'll look up that one word and I'll understand. And it makes it a lot easier. But I try mm -hmm. not to look up yeah, words yeah. mid conversation. Yeah, um, because do. that that kills the conversation a lot of times. So that is how I <laughs> oh. learned Japanese and why. Ooh, dude, yes. that is good. That is good. I think that is something I recently also uh, mm. just saw of of um, people helping other people like get better at at something, anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was saying how like goals are actually not so great for you, but mm. creating a routine yeah. is so much better because a goal is like such a big thing. You have mm -hmm. a lot of pressure. It's right. not going to be fun. Um, and if you don't get it, you feel even worse. But they're like, instead of that, like just create a, a simple routine yeah. that you don't feel like this pressure of, right. of, of like you have to get to this score for this test. Uh, yeah, yeah creating yeah. that routine like you did do a lot of focus and study at the beginning mm -hmm. but then once you got here like you know you, you had some hard times so it's like that studying didn't really help but what did help was just right. putting yourself in the environment and creating this routine of going to this club right. uh going to this um the, your friend's mom's pub mm -hmm. uh going to this certain place for lunch all the time right right something i see connected though is they probably all serve alcohol am i correct <laughs> you, you are but i mean the people that i met <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in those places they would invite me like the moms um you know uh the pub they went and did they they did hanami <laughs> one time and had a barbecue okay okay yeah which, which also had alcohol <laughs> but you know, they would invite me places and we would go as like, yes, I'm not the patron anymore. I'm not the person, the customer. Right, going right, right, right. The pub. We're friends going and enjoying 
our company together. Right. And right. I'm able to enjoy this company because I'm slowly understanding the communication that's happening. This is another beautiful long episode for everyone. Oh, Hopefully dude. you've yeah. enjoyed it. Yes. Um, this is how me and Adam, why we studied Japanese, mm. how we went through the hardships and where we found some salvation, something that yeah. really helped us out, getting th us through some bad times, some mm. difficult times, or, or getting us over the hurdles of, of just pushing past, forgetting about maybe some of the bad things and just, just continuing because mm. that's the biggest thing. We just need to continue because something good will happen out of it. If we see it or not, definitely something is going to grow from that. Yeah. So keep it going. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel if yeah. you want to hear more of me and Adam giving some uh, some of our two cents about Japan, the life that we live here, and that's about it. So oh, yeah, become a member if you'd like. Hey. Yeah. And if you want to get in contact with us, we got other SNS channels: Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram where we spend most of our time so you can check us out there send us a message say hello say what you're doing in your english studies yeah definitely that's it everyone we'll see you on the on next, the next step. step 